Are children more sensitive to the spirit realm when they are young? Do our senses wane as we get older and we're no longer able to see things from other dimensions? Well, every once in a while, stories are sent to me that have a little bit of trace evidence. See if you can spot it in one of these stories. We have two stories sent to us, one by a woman named Vivas, and another story sent by a man named Jay. These are encounters that happened to them while they were young. The first story is from Vivas, and it goes like this. When I was five years old, my bed was against the wall on the door side of the room where the light switch was at the front of the head of my bed. It was facing a white dresser. I didn't have a headboard, so my pillow would fall off at night. And one night, I was woke up because my pillow had fallen into the floor. And I reached down to retrieve it. There was a dark slumped down, pointed backwards head with a tail figure there. And I froze. I could not speak, scream, or cry, just frozen. My hand began to freeze and hurt, as if it had grabbed it. It seemed in time to be forever. It kept its face turned down so I could not see its eyes. But its nose and its chin were twitching, and its index finger was in a place as if it was thinking. I had remembered suddenly an old church hymn and began thinking of the words inside my head. And right then it raised up. And it had no feet. It drifted across the foot of my bed as if it went to leave my room. It turned its back to the door and peered back at me with huge glowing black dotted eyes. It pulled the door shut with a slam. That was when my sister woke up and asked what I was doing, but she immediately saw I had gone under the covers and was shivering and whispering the phrase, surely goodness and mercy. And we always shut the door before I turned out the light my older brother and sister were messing with Ouija boards and tarot cards and seances and fortune telling. And we lived not too far from Bohemian Grove. You are the first person I have ever heard tell such a similar happening. I have only ever told a few people in my lifetime this story, let alone a psychologist, for fear they would lock me up. Now this girl, she also comments a little bit later in another email that she was scared to leave a door open or a door cracked or a closet door or any kind of anything in her room. She didn't want to leave open or cracked at all, like a drawer or a closet or a dresser or anything. She was scared to leave anything cracked. This had a tremendous effect on her. Whenever she told anybody about what happened, they would dismiss it and poke fun at her. And she knew what happened to her was real. When the being slammed the door, I believe that is somewhat trace evidence because it woke her sister up. How can a being that is non-physical slam a physical door? That is one thing that I believe is misunderstood about these spiritual beings because in the Bible these type beings had bodies. They ate with people. They wrestled with people. They were physical but they also could be non-physical and come inside of a dream and give you a message. It's a very interesting story that this lady sent. 
what do you think about this one and our next story comes from Jay when I was little around six or seven I had an experience with demonic entities it was the middle of the night and for some reason I couldn't sleep I had woken up but was having difficulty going back to sleep my two brothers in the room were sound asleep I was up for a while off to the corner of my eye I saw something moving it was weird to me because these black blobby looking things came out of the wall they had a head and a body that were not human the odd thing to me at the time was how they were so visible because even though the room was dark these entities were so black that they actually stood out they were floating and didn't actually touch the ground at first there were three but as they got closer more came out and I think there were either eight or ten or more of them I couldn't really tell how many there were as they got closer I thought my uh, I thought my mind was playing tricks on me so I closed my eyes and opened it up after a few seconds at that point they were right on me and lifted me up in the air not far but I think about three to four feet at that point I got scared and tried to scream especially when I heard them laughing but not a word came out I think was the first time I ever experienced being frozen in fear the creatures had very powerful and masculine almost sinister laughing through my thought I cried out to God immediately for help just basically in my mind I asked God please help me since I couldn't cry out not sure why my brothers could not hear creatures laughing almost immediately after I cried out to God in my thoughts they put me down and started screaming as if they were angry or in agony now this screaming was much louder than laughter but it sounded as if they were in severe pain or torture at that point they floated back away from me towards the wall after a few minutes I could only see one but he was halfway out between the wall and my bedroom I could only see what looks like half of him they left through the wall one of them kept peeping out as if it was looking at me I kept praying and it left finally I stopped being fearful of them and turned my back to them as I was talking to God in my mind the first time I waited about 30 to 45 seconds and turned over really quickly to see if they were there and the one started to come out more from the wall and it looked like two or three more were trying to come out I didn't have fear at this point and I asked God to move them back more and away they went I turned back over and waited five ten uh, minutes and looked back again for them to be gone completely years later I always thought it was one of those crazy moments children have until I was an adult and one manifested itself to me during daylight I've always seen I've only seen these black blobby looking things twice but have witnessed other different encounters I wanted to share my story with you as I was thinking to listen to your story online
Now, what do you think about Viva's story? A door slamming and waking her sister up? And then Jay's story, where he had these entities screaming in his room and laughing in his room and making horrible noise and didn't wake his sister or brothers up. The one thing I find in common is that these people always try to make some sense of it and sometimes they tend to look for other reasons that they may have experienced something like this but they always keep coming back to this was real because of and then they give their explanations because when you have these things happen to you you know they're real I've had my own encounters and I've had a devil attack me right in front of my sister and she saw it I was going to try to say I was dreaming I hallucinated, but she said, no, you didn't. I saw it. It had horns and was red and glowing. I saw it attack you. You did not hallucinate. So I would say to Vivas and to Jay that you had a real encounter. And the one thing that both of you did that made sense was that you prayed. And in Jay's case, the prayer actually harmed these creatures to the point that they were crying out in agony. That's how powerful prayer is. In Bebe's case, she prayed goodness and mercy from the Psalm of David. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And the creature had to get up and leave. And the reason is, is that when we pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And when the Holy Spirit is interceding, they cannot stay in the room. So tell me what you think. Are these real encounters or a figment of your imagination? Or hallucination? Do children seem to be more sensitive as they're young and as they get older their senses wane off leave your comments below subscribe like these videos and share them and i'll see you on the next video